So what comes to mind when I mention museums? For me, it's mainly art and history. And Kansas City's got those kinds of museums. I mean, we've got the Nelson Atkins Museum. We've got the Kemper Museum of Contemporary Art. But if you're anything like me, art and history museums aren't something that jump out at you as like, let's go right now, you know? So instead of focusing on art and history museums, I'm going to show you some of the other museums around Kansas City that are a little more unique. So college basketball. That's not something you usually think of as a museum, but the College Basketball Hall of Fame is actually located in Kansas City, Missouri. And with such a specific niche, how do you bring in people that maybe don't pay all that much attention to college basketball? Well, this museum has found a way to do it, and I'll show you that in just a second. But first, let's take a look at the Hall of Fame. So a lot of the names and history in this museum just kind of went that is until I came across one name and I got pretty excited. I was like, hey, I actually know one of them. But that's really only because he became pretty big in the NBA. Actually finding names I know. <laughs> but the best part of the College Basketball Hall of Fame isn't really the names on the wall, in my opinion. It's the interactive experience. Remember when I asked how a museum about college basketball could draw in a crowd? Get ready to see why I never played basketball in college. Well, this place is cooler than I was expecting. I swear I was doing better than this at first, but my friend forgot to hit the record button. So I didn't record the first part. See, he even admitted it. But maybe I'll be better at dunking. Seven foot goal and eight foot goal, no problem. Nine foot goal though. I don't think I'm gonna get this. Look at this idiot. I say that counts. Clearly you'll never see my name listed in this hall of fame, but name another museum that lets you play basketball. But that's enough for this museum. Let's check out another one in Kansas City. So keeping with sports, and before I reveal what we're gonna talk about next, I have a question for you. Who was the first African American to play for the major leagues in baseball? Wrong. For all of you saying Jackie Robinson playing for the Brooklyn Dodgers, you're wrong. I too once thought it was Jackie Robinson, but I went to the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum in Kansas City and I learned that it was actually somebody else. So Jackie Robinson's first day in the major leagues was April 15th, 1947. And I learned that there's another baseball player that actually played six decades, six decades decades before Jackie Robinson. And who was this player? I'll answer that in just a second. But first, let's take a look at this museum. To see these fellows jumping upon each other, it looks natural, doesn't it? <laughs> they are friends, colleagues, competitors. Now, why is this museum in Kansas City, you might ask? Well, another thing I learned at this museum is the Negro Leagues actually started in Kansas City. And I actually found out that Jackie Robinson played for the Kansas City Monarchs in the Negro Leagues before going up to the Dodgers. Not to mention the Kansas City Monarchs won the very first championship in this league. But setting all that aside, going to this museum was a little bit more than just learning about how the league was formed and who played for it. It also showcased what some of the athletes had to go through when going to different towns to play games and the issue of finding hotel rooms and everything since this was all back during segregation. It also talked about what this league and many of these teams did for their communities, bringing together people that had a love of baseball that maybe weren't so welcome at some of the other stadiums in the major leagues. Now, as I've probably said before, I'm not the biggest sports historian. I don't watch a whole lot of sports unless I'm just rooting for my local team. So I can't speak to a lot of all these names that are being brought up when you go through the museum. But anyone who's a Kansas City native or spends enough time here and goes to a baseball game has probably heard the name Buck O'Neill. He was the first baseman for the Kansas City Monarchs and eventually the manager. And after his playing days, he became a scout and eventually was the first African-American coach in Major League Baseball. There's a lot to see here from the memorabilia, the recreations of what it was like back then, as well as archival footage of games that made me kind of wonder what it would be like to have been at one. Even someone like me that doesn't know a lot of baseball history knows names like Hank Aaron, Willie Mays, Smokey Joe Williams, Satchel Paige, 
and of course the aforementioned Buck O'Neill and Jackie Robinson. But don't worry, I haven't forgotten about that question I started with. Who was the player that was the first African American to be in the major leagues? I learned at the museum that it was actually Moses Fleetwood Walker who played in the 1884 season for the Toledo Blue Stockings. Toledo was part of the American Association that played against the National League. And this is just a sample of what you could learn on your own visit to the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum. And at only $10 admission, why not schedule a visit? But we're not just talking about sports museums today. Something else Kansas City is widely known for, no I'm not meaning barbecue, although talking about barbecue makes me hungry. I'm talking about jazz. Down near 18th and Vine in the Jazz District, in the same building as the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum, is the American Jazz Museum. And this is a museum that really is for music lovers. You can check out different artists, what they used with instruments, the, the music they made, and you can read about some of the best songs of the era from the biggest names in jazz. But the best part has got to be getting to hear the music. I actually played jazz trombone for about 10 or 12 years, so it's safe to say that jazz has a, uh, let's say, special place in my heart. So I got a kick out of putting the speakers up to my ear and checking out some of the songs they had throughout the museum. All right, since I've played jazz trombone for several years, I gotta eat some jazz trombone. Here, listen. But this isn't just a museum. Attached to the American Jazz Museum is the Blue Room. And in the Blue Room, jazz is alive and well in Kansas City. Going back to sports, let's talk about the Royals Hall of Fame. I promise this is the last one that is sports related free to anyone attending a Royals game, or if you happen to tour the stadium, which I've done a video on before, there's plenty to see here from the history of baseball and specifically Royals history in baseball, along with many of our Hall of Famers. Hence, it's called the Hall of Fame. Durr. Of course, it's going to have Hall of Famers in it. It's called the Royals Hall of Fame. <laughs> this is what happens when you're just ad-libbing. If you want to see more about what the tour of Kauffman Stadium is like, check out the previous video I did in my description. A museum that is unique to Kansas City that has the most comprehensive World War I collection is the National World War I Museum. So I'm here with my boy Chris and we're about to go to the National World War I Museum and Memorial. This is actually the only World War I Museum in all of the United States and there's actually something very unique about this museum that we'll show you in a minute. After you enter the museum to get to the exhibits, there's a glass walkway that goes over 9,000 flowers, each of which represents 1,000 combatant deaths during the war. So they have all these rugs here. I have a question about the rugs. Is that because some people like might not feel right like being able to see below exactly. so as to make them feel better? Exactly. I knew it. There's a lot to see and read up on to actually learn how this war began, what was involved, and of course, eventually how it ended. But you will find a lot of artifacts, including grenades, knives, weapons, a tank, cannons, uniforms, instruments, and propaganda materials. But it was very impressive the collection of weaponry they had. So this museum is almost like a library in the sense that many areas, there's like a hush that falls across everybody as we're reading and visualizing what they had to go through. What's crazy to me is like all these gas masks. I'm like, obviously I know what they were used for, but just if I was to wear something like that today, I'd feel like I wouldn't actually have the protection at all. Especially like these little hoods. It was a real battle. Machine guns, right? Shells, airplanes and tanks. Everything you read about, I saw them all. I was like books, and trees, baskets, and deep shell holes, all kinds of stuff. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah.
and looking at all these artifacts as you make your way through the museum really put in your head that it was a different time. And yes, it's easy to say, oh, it's a different time because it was a hundred years ago. But what these people lived through is not something many of us can even remotely comprehend or understand. A perfect example of this is the fact that, I mean, many cities were leveled and there was just artillery just left behind, like the remnants, the shells and the bullet casings. And people actually took this and made it into cups and lamps and things that they could actually use in their home because it was the materials that were just laying around. I mean, I get it. Like, this stuff would have just been laying everywhere over there, so you might as well use it. That's just something that's hard to imagine to have to live through. Just like many of the museums I've already talked about, there is something special about this one, and that's the eternal flame on top of Liberty Memorial, which is the tower outside of the museum. So the Liberty Memorial Tower is taller than the Statue of Liberty. Now, I don't know if it's also taller when you include the pedestal, but yeah, the Statue of Liberty is not as big as you think. Well, I just learned a thing walking through all this. Apparently the flame uh, that I've always known to be on top of Liberty, Memo Liberty Memorial is actually just an effect that says it's achieved through steam pipes and multiple colors of light and has been that way since 1926. I thought it was real fire. And there's even more than that. What a lot of people don't realize, many locals included because Chris didn't even know this, you can actually go up Liberty Memorial. The tower has a viewing platform just under the flame that is just a short elevator ride and 45 steps to get to. <laughs> oh, now that is a view of downtown Kansas City. Anytime I'm gonna come see this museum, you gotta come up and see the tower. Oh, definitely. It's a long way down. Since the museum just opened, we actually have the entire tower to ourselves because we came up here first. But let's go see what's on the other side. It's really windy today though, so sorry about that. Most of the iconic Kansas City buildings are on the other side, which works out great because that's blocking the wind. So if you're looking like, hey, you know, what is else is here? Like, what is the things that nobody else sees? Yeah. I'm like, that's, that's true. Well, I mean, that's exactly, that's something I've like kind of referenced for a while. It's you need to treat the city you live in like you're a tourist because everyone's like, oh, there's nothing to do here. Who's going on vacation? Right. But if you literally just take the time and be like, if I've never been here before and you're just searching for, you know, interesting things to do, places to eat, you end up finding that there's a lot that you can do in your town that you've never even heard of. With such a variety of museums in Kansas City beyond just art and history, there's something here for everyone. Which of these museums do you plan to add to your list next time you're in Kansas City? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe. Like with as windy as it is down on the ground right now, I'm like, we gotta go see what's on the other side. It's been a hot minute since I've been up here. Since the museum just opened, wow, that's windy. It is huge. It's so windy.